I'm using a, a funky stand. Uh, it's a little more uh, open. I, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm hiding behind that giant one. Um, it's special. What? <laughs> We're hiding behind it. Um, I'm just uh, honored again to have the opportunity to share what God's been working in my heart uh, and in my life. And, and uh, <laughs> I, I swear every time he puts something burning on my heart to share, it is always after a very severe humbling moment where he's speaking it to me first uh, and doing something in my life. So join me as we pray. God, I just thank you for tonight. I thank you, God, that we have the incredible opportunity and honor that we get to meet with you. What an incredible promise, God, that if we seek you, we will find you. And I thank you, God, that there is no uh, amount to you that is too much to find. God, I pray that you speak to us anew. I I pray that you just speak and create something new in our hearts and our minds tonight. In your name. And everybody said, amen. amen. So I, uh, I'm solely on the spirit in Red Bull right now. That's it. That's all I got. We had an awesome weekend uh, with the middle school retreat. Uh, it got crazy. And so I'm lacking sleep. I'm lacking a little bit of my sanity after the weekend. Because uh, Lord knows the weekend with Pastor Zach, you don't come back the same, right? But... Once again, I'm, I'm happy. Boys, you can bring that up for me right now. They got a little sermon illustration. Um, it's a sleeping bag. I'm just going to take a nap, and we're going to talk about resting in the presence. So I'm just going to take a nap, and you guys are just going to watch, and that's the, that's the night. So, oh, Red Bull. Timely. Just said it right there for me. Thank you. Would you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 5? John chapter 5. Starting at verse 1, afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, He asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus is going back to Jerusalem, and we see this picture of at this pool where the sick and the blind and the lame would gather, and the phenomena in the culture was that an angel would come down and stir the waters and the first person to get in the water would be healed. And so that's why groups of those who are needing healing would gather, expecting and hoping that they could be healed, but ultimately searching in the wrong direction. And so these people wanted freedom. They needed freedom. They needed healing. And they're looking at this pool for the answer And the answer shows up, and he starts asking questions. And he, I love that, Jesus saw the man, and he knew he had been ill for a long time. That's a powerful phrase. A lot of times in our sin and our sickness and our whatever we're carrying as a burden, it feels like we're we're so deep in a hole that God does not see us, that we're invisible, that we're out of reach, out of touch. Right, And it's an extra burden that Satan loves to put on us on top of whatever we're struggling with, whatever we're battling in the moment. But know that Jesus not only sees you, but he knows. He knows exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly what you're going to go through in the future. He knows what you have been through. This man had been sick for 38 years. I don't know how old he was, but I'm willing to guess that's a majority of his life that he's been sick. It's almost become the identity of this man. He's just, that's who he is. And he's sitting at this pool and Jesus asks him the crazy question, would you like to get well? Would you like to get well? Jesus knows exactly what we need. 
In verse 8, Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping bag and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath, so the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. But he replied, the man who healed me told me, pick up your mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that, they demanded. The man did not know, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But afterwards, listen to this, afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now you are well. So stop sinning or something even worse may happen to you. Then the man went and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had healed him. Jesus gave this man, when, when he healed him, a three-part command that I believe that Jesus is speaking to us each and every day, a three-part command. If you're taking notes, notes, Lord help me, Red Bull. Come on. That's my, uh, that's my Wednesday, Wednesday go-to, a little Holy Spirit Red Bull combination. If you've never tried it, Weaver, give it a try. That'd be an interesting Sunday morning, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Just coffee? No, Red Bull. We're going to make that happen sometime. The three-part command. The first part is stand up. Everyone say, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Pick up your mat and walk. What kept the man in sin, in a spiritual sense, not being healed, and in a very physical sense, stuck, is he was hoping for a cure, but he wasn't finding a cure, right? He was hoping and even searching in a place that he thought was the cure, but he didn't know the cure. And Jesus was that cure for him. It kept him stuck for so long, what felt like an eternity, and he was waiting hopelessly for something just to happen. How many times is that our prayer? And I, I feel like God, <laughs> the, insulted comes to my mind, but that's not the word I'm looking for. He almost gets almost taken back at our prayer of that way, like this man. I'm just going to wait here, God, hoping that you do something. And God's going, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I've sent that something to you, and I want you to know him then something is gonna happen, right? And uh, this man, this struggle, I guarantee you it became his identity. And, and uh, this mat, in the sense of the, the old culture, this was his identity. People knew that if this man was on his mat, it, it identified him as a beggar, as poor, as whatever in the culture. It was his identity. And he had, he had ado adopted the identity of his sickness. And I want you to know that your past is not your identity. What you carry is not your identity. The fear of your future is not your identity. Your identity is an adopted son or daughter of Jesus. Right? Come on. I got Red Bull in me. I need someone to speak to me. You are an adopted son or daughter of Jesus. That is your identity. You are not your parents' sin. You are not your sin. There is not, I don't believe in a generational curse of sin that you have to just assume in your life as your identity. You are who God says you are. And Jesus says this, man, I don't care what your identity you think it is. You need to stand up. You need to stand up. Jesus showed him the cure in introducing himself. And Jesus wants to introduce himself to you again tonight. Whether you've been a Christian your whole life, I believe that God, we can meet him. That's why we say we want to meet with God. We can meet him anew every single day. Every single day. And he's calling us to stand up out of whatever place that you may be in. Whether that's emotional place of you're stuck in fear or it's a very physical place of you need healing. God is the healer. That's who he is. And he's saying stand up. No matter how strong or how long or how powerful, whatever you're stuck in, whatever you're, whatever you're assuming your identity is, Jesus is stronger. 
Jesus is greater than that. Stand up. That's the first part. He's saying stand up, have faith, because God wants to heal you. Number two, everyone say number two. Pick up your mat. Pick up your mat. I don't believe anywhere in the Bible that there's just phrases that are just randomly thrown in there or even specific words. I think every word has a purpose and specifically Jesus speaking this has an extra special and powerful purpose for this man in particular. You think of this, this man, he's adopted this as his identity. It's his job. That's what gets him the money that he can just provide for himself for just to have a meal, right? And he's sitting there at this pool and there's people just like him all around. Now, man, is this, this is a picture of our culture today. He is sitting in a place where people all around him are looking for something to cure them. They're looking for something to fulfill them, to complete them, or maybe give them a new identity. Come on, is that not our culture? And this man was a part of that place. It was who he was, and that mat was with him. That's what he was. That was his sin, that was his, 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 his sickness. So Jesus says, stand up, you're healed. You're healed, and, and, and God wants to heal you. He wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your past. He wants to help you forgive someone. But that's not all that he's calling us to tonight. The second part of the command, pick up your mat. Because of this man, he gets up, right, in faith. We all know the end of the story. He, he's healed. And Jesus says, hey, don't forget that. And what that is, that is an opportunity to go right back to where he was sitting. Can you picture that? This, Jesus says, hey, get up. He's sitting down. Oh, gosh, I'm not going to be able to get up. He's sitting down. He says, get up. Wow, I'm healed. Jesus has healed me. And he leaves his mat. And all those people who are struggling in a similar way see this man get up. And they see the mat stay there. And this man leaves. To those people around the mat still sitting there, what are they thinking in their minds? Because he left that there, he must be coming back. He must be coming back. And so Jesus says so powerfully, and I believe just prophetically in this man's life, he says, hey, don't forget this. Don't forget this. I'm not just healing you, but I'm removing opportunity for you to go back to that place. No longer is it easier to go back because that's just comfortable. That's what I've known for 38 years, Jesus. I don't know what's ahead of me. That's easier for me just to go and lay there again. Jesus is saying, uh-uh, I got something better for you. Jesus has something better for you tonight in whatever aspect that you need. And he's saying, don't look back anymore. Do not look back anymore because if you look in the, to the past, you're gonna stay there. If you look to the past, you're gonna stay there. And I think of the metaphor of going up and, and hiking. It, I think of the, the times when I went out with my family to Colorado and we went on this, uh, this tough hike and me and my brothers, you know, we're always, we're super competitive so we're pushing each other to, you know, we, we, we always go off the beaten path and do our own thing. But I, I remember when, it, when I'm tired and I know I'm out of shape and the air's getting thin and it's harder and you could see like, I, it was super foggy so I really couldn't even see the end. But what I did know is where I had been, and so it was a lot easier to go right back down the path that I had already been than to push forward and to pioneer into something that I knew I should go and that was better for me, right? And the same way is with our spiritual walks. We get to a place, even to a place where, where God has healed you. You've been healed, but you haven't picked up that stinking mat. You haven't picked it up. You've left it open and said, okay, God, I know you've healed me, but I'm just gonna leave this here just in case, just in case I have to go back. And think of those men and women and people who are at this pool and they see this man get healed. Wow, powerful testimony. What kind of testimony would it be if that man went and sat down right back down? It wouldn't be. 
And so Jesus isn't just saying this for you. He wants to pioneer something new in your life and your walk with him, but he's also doing it for the people around you because I believe everything that God does is for his glory, so he's going to heal you, not just for you, but for someone laying right next to you that maybe is struggling. Maybe it's someone at your work. Maybe it's someone in your family. I think of in my own life when, when my grandpa, hard-nosed, just unemotional military lifer, I honestly was scared of him as a kid. Like, I just was scared of him. Didn't believe in Jesus, didn't want anything to do with Jesus. This is how stubborn he was. The doctor said, hey, we're gonna have to amputate your leg unless you stop smoking. He was a chain smoker his whole life. And he said, I'd rather die with one leg if I could get up in the morning and smoke a cigarette and read the paper. That was who he was, okay? He was stubborn, all right? And we were praying. I remember praying and praying and praying as a little kid. Jesus, would you just meet my grandpa? Would you meet him? And God spoke to me when I was in college, and he said, hey, Luke, if you tell your grandpa the good things that I have done and the testimony for my glory, it'll change him. Long story short, I met him in the hospital room when he was on his deathbed, and I just got to tell my grandpa the good things that he's done in my life. And he accepted Jesus before he died. My grandma shortly was on her deathbed right after, and she accepted Jesus. It's a crazy story. But God wants to use what he's done in your life, not just to impact you, but the people around you. And so maybe he's calling you to be vulnerable tonight and say, God, whatever you have for me, whatever I've been through, I give it to you to impact anyone around me because I'm not that identity anymore. I picked up my mat and I'm moving forward. Worship team, would you come? I just want to give us ample opportunity to encounter the God that wants to pick you up and remove opportunity to go back. And you could be in this place and you could be like, man, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing really well. I feel pretty confident in my faith. Jesus wants to pioneer something new in you. I will never get over the fact how humbling it is that I get to meet with God every single day. And every single day he's gonna do something new. He's new. He's not a ritualistic God in a sense, it's just the same old regurgitated thing. But he wants to do something new in your life. The last thing, number three, say number three, was walk. Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Once again, he was calling this man out of that place that he was to step out into the new place. And I love in verse 14, but, Je but afterward, Jesus found him where? In the temple. This man didn't know. It said Jesus has disappeared so he couldn't find him. So where did he go? Instead of sticking around the people that he probably knew most and the most intimate, he said, I have to step out because you're gonna hold me back and I'm gonna go see, I'm gonna seek God. He was in the temple. He's left the place that he was at despite relationships, despite how easy it would have been to stay. He walked, he walked and he met Jesus again. Take a step of faith. Take a literal step of faith. If you've never taken a, a physical step of faith, and come down to an altar. There's nothing special about this, but it's a physical step of faith that reflects your heart saying, God, I'm gonna step out because I know that you're gonna step out. Would you stand with me? Stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Whatever those three things mean to you, God wants to heal you, stand up, stand up. Number two, God wants to remove the opportunity to go back and he wants to use that testimony. Pick up your mat. Or number three, walk. He's got something new for you. And I'm so thankful for a God that is new, that is fresh, that is alive and intimate and wants to meet with us. I'm gonna pray and then give us ample opportunity and we'll just let the worship team kind of finish out so we can dismiss after that. If you need to go or grab kids, that's great. But let God do something in your life tonight because he will if you give him the chance. Jesus, I just thank you. 
we thank you God that you heal us that you take us from where we are where we are and you move us forward and that you have new things for us God I pray in the name of Jesus that you would do something anew and afresh whether that's healing whether that's cutting off ties whether that's showing us something new I pray you to meet us encounter your people as we worship you as we sing the praises Thank you, God, for what you've done on the cross for us so we can meet with you. Worship you, Jesus, in your holy name.